Welcome to Ranger Rob Has Your Back, a show that features your business, your services, your products. On Ranger Rob Has Your Back, you are the star. Let Ranger Rob be your advocate. Let's get started. Hi guys, this is Rob or Ranger Rob. And today I want to talk about a subject that's near and dear to my heart is uh, just get right to the point, being a visionary. <clears throat> so the first thing I'm going to do is put a picture on the screen that only means something to certain people. And the reason I want to just put it there is because there'll be people, <laughs> they monitor me all the time, um, good, bad, or indifferent. But uh, uh, often I think some people wonder, do I remember? And uh, yeah, boy, I do. And uh, so the symbol on here means something unique for an organization I actually was involved in back in the 80s. <clears throat> But this is the subject about being a visionary. And uh, so uh, you have to remember in the 80s, I was in my early 20s, 20s and actually just before 20s and, and uh, just after my 20s. And I am what they call a visionary. What's the difference? Well, there's, um, I don't know if schools do this anymore, but you find out kind of what your personality is or what drives you. For example, my wife is um, more detail-oriented, more analytical, and visionaries <laughs> are just the opposite. That's why probably Sherry and I have been married for 40 years. <clears throat> so here's the secret if you're a visionary. Make sure you're hanging out or married or you're partnered with someone who's more detail oriented and analytical they'll keep you grounded <laughs> because visionaries will just go i mean just go with it and they will scare people <clears throat> and lord knows how many times i scared people now i found when i was younger as a visionary when i was doing things as a sing single entity um really wasn't a problem like uh gosh when i was 16 or 17 I became a uh, deckhand working on fishing boats. And I mean, that was crazy, totally insane. But uh, I just, I loved fishing. I loved the outdoors. I loved the money we're making as teenagers and uh, the hard work. And, with you know, without that drive, uh, boy, some people would start their first day working on a fishing boat and they'd just like, I can't do this. But anyway, uh, moving on, but I was part of <clears throat> sorry, part of a very big organization that I created from scratch. And um, I'm trying not to kind of go too detailed into it, but a lot of people who are watching my videos uh, will stumble across this and realize, oh, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, so in a very young age, I was motivated to become something that uh, I just really wanted. And, I, and there was nobody really to push me except my mother at the time, but I lost her when I was 14. But I remember that she, the reason I even got into this organization and do the skill that I had was um, driven by my mother and her wishes that she'd like to see me do that. And so it was kind of something I learned to do um, uh, and developed it to a point of uh, having some success with it. Now, I want to also talk about this visionary kind of lifestyle I had at first. Um, wasn't biz that business oriented. Um, it wasn't something that was making me a lot of money. It was giving me a lot of success and all, you know, doing some wonderful things for the community, for children and, and teenagers. And uh, um, kind of think of it as kind of like a church organization, you might say. So anyway, so I have this skill <laughs> and haven't revealed the skill to you and I'm not going to that I learned to do and I could still do it today, but it just doesn't have its purpose in this day and age. But anyway, um, so we started this organization with children in it um, um, in our early, oh, actually 1979. And uh, it started out. Oh my gosh, I had this vision of what I wanted to do and a lot of kids showed up for it and being a greenhorn and not having a whole thing. Uh, after a year's time of teaching lessons and all these things, they uh, 
it dwindled off to a kind of a small group <laughs> and it's like, okay, lessons learned. There's a few things. So I got, I didn't give up. I just changed it up more and made it better. And I had to get better. And so my visionary thing was driving me something fierce and I did get better and better in the organization I created went from a handful, you know, of 15, 20 kids to hundreds. We're talking hundreds. And um, throughout the years, as this thing grew, uh, the, the uh, preteen kind of kids would grow into teenagers. And it's like, oh, we got to expand the organization. Just to, We didn't want to lose the teenagers because they're just great kids. And this thing grew humongous. And just like any organization, uh, I was a driver. And I wanted to be better and better and better because I'd take these kids to certain competitions and stuff like that. And the first couple of years, they'd do so-so. And it was like, I carried that weight. Like, I need to do better. I got to be better so these kids can be better. And I did. And uh, I really hit the peak of everything in about five years. But the drawback as a visionary is you'll drive people crazy. And one thing that happens a lot, and this is the reason I want to talk about visionaries, is <clears throat> this will happen throughout the years. What I didn't realize at the time was everything that happened to me back in those days was preparing me for even bigger things later. So those folks that were back there that think they pulled something off or whatever, uh, think twice. <laughs> Um, you know, when something initially happens to you, you're mad, but over time you kind of like, wow, if I hadn't had this stuff happen to me, I wouldn't be good at what I'm doing today. <clears throat> so, uh, when you have an organization, what happens is you get people around you that start thinking that, that they could do it better than you can. And sometimes you start believing it too. It's like, well, maybe I'm not that good anyway. So as this organization got bigger, you know, you have to have more um, managers of it. And uh, we call them advisors back in the day. And, uh, you know, I, I know I, uh, me, uh, me, Sherry stood behind me always. And uh, she was always my backbone. And I was always a driver. And, uh, um, and I always have a new idea. And I, uh, and, uh it, that can drive other people crazy. But there's other people when you get something big or successful, there's always someone that wants to take it away or they think they can do it better than you. And sometimes you believe that they can. Um, but uh, that wasn't the case. Um, eventually you got to a, a point where the managers kind of got up against the leaders, like which might be me and Sherry, and thought that if they took it over and did it their way, things would be better. And we were exhausted. <laughs> I mean, we used to put 110% into that kind of stuff. And uh, uh, basically, it was them against us. And it was one of those, like, eventually, it just, long story short, we let it go. We, they said, oh, we don't want you anymore. And, and it's like, are you kidding me? I'm the one that started this thing. <clears throat> anyway. And they couldn't face me. They actually had to go through my wife, the, um, through her, because they didn't have the guts. Uh, they were cowards. Uh, and I'll say it to this day, cowards. They couldn't face me eye to eye. They're like, we can't work with you anymore. And and lessons learned, I could definitely understand back in those days. I was a ball of energy. And um, if you're not used to being against somebody that's uh, um, like that, he would like, oh my gosh, it takes the right kind of people to be around you. I understand they're working with a visionary. So anyway, so uh, we stepped away. And uh, what they don't know <laughs> is proof of concept. So a year later, they actually destroyed that whole thing. Um, hundreds of kids all dispersed. Well, it wasn't like a year or two later. It's like, uh, I still like kind of doing it. I'm going to do it again. So just to prove that I could do it again, I did. <laughs> and 
<laughs> and the same thing happened, grew like crazy, got really uh, large, and all the people that were involved in the management of it all got cocky and all thought they could do it better. And uh, after about two and a half years, I said, okay, I'm done. I need to put this energy into something more career oriented. So I've, I've had to eventually put down uh, the tools that I was using to be successful in this organization and move on. Bitter a little bit? Yeah. I mean, it was at the time. Uh, later, no, I didn't realize just a great training that it gave me. Uh, first of all, I, I've built many co um, companies in my in my uh, lifetime. And uh, uh, one thing I've always learned, when your company is successful and grows, there's always someone that wants to take you down. Learned that at an early age, thanks to those people back then. And uh, to this day, some of those people or still watch my Facebook or still a, or were participants in that stuff. The ones that are participants understood exactly what kind of people me and Sherry were. The ones that were running it were people that will never really understand what was going on. And uh, they probably struggled a lot of their lives because they just always thought they could do something better than someone with a vision. And, ain't going to happen. <laughs> so anyway, but also those people were good people too. They did wonderful things and they helped, you know, with the children and all that kind of stuff. And I am always grateful for that. Um, but the rest of the things they did, um, they carry that. And I'm, of course, back in those days, you'll see things totally different. Time kind of washes memories away, but, uh, I can assure you that, uh, um, I proved the concept twice and it wasn't um, it wasn't them that was making it successful. It was me and my wife <clears throat> bottom line. But the point to the whole thing is being a visionary is uh, amazing. Uh, it's, it's kind of like being a prophet. <laughs> you can get an idea and literally see it all the way through and you, You'll lose sleep over things. You get an idea and you cannot sleep because you've got to play it all out through your head 20,000 different ways to see if your vision works. Luckily, you got to have someone who's like my wife <laughs> that can go, yeah, you can do that, but, you know, you got to do this, this, and this. And like, oh, yeah, now I sit up at night and do it again. And uh, I've ran now, this is 35 years ago. <clears throat> and uh or more <laughs> and uh uh you know life has changed a lot people have changed a lot the world has changed a lot um but there's still your drivers there's you know, drivers analytics and there's uh uh your visionaries um I'm, don't confuse a driver with a visionary a visionary can literally see things way ahead of others and uh, uh in fact <clears throat> I'll go back even to those days again. And uh, you remember, um, <clears throat> sorry, I was yelling at the dogs that come in the house and now I lost my voice. Do you remember back in the 80s, um, the, vi uh, the video cameras just came out and uh, they were kind of big. They were like so big and you had this big pack thing you put, <laughs> you put a uh, video cameras are gigantic. And I thought that was a, the craziest, neatest thing in the world. And uh, some actually some people that were involved in the same organization uh, that I was talking about earlier, um, so I met a guy <clears throat> who was uh, really into photography. And I had another guy who was kind of in, in, interested in the video stuff too. This is way before everything. This was like no one thought of this stuff then. But back in the 80s, <clears throat> I come to find out that there's people that want – Weddings videotaped, and, and you know, back then it was really you know, we had the big cassettes and all that stuff. The editing equipment was awful. <clears throat> and uh, I'm sorry, I really was screaming for the dogs. It's like the dogs get five acres away, you go, Come here, anyway. So, and then I go do a podcast, right? So, anyway, uh, um, uh, so I like. You know, I got people are paying us to do some of these little weddings and we did some boat races and things like that. And um, and people, just, they want documentation or stuff. And there was never anything like that around. This is almost comical when you look at today's world. 
So I had this vision of like, let's create a studio and we'll actually turn this into a business. So I had like two other guys involved with me um, and, and I'm, you know, all my head's exploding. Let's do this, this, and this. I actually got a building. I actually was, uh, we kind of built a wall with a curve in it so we could do photography. And uh, I mean, we were just going gung. I mean, it was, well, my head's going to explode. It was like, you remember, I'm only like 20 some odd years, very young. And these other people, I, I literally scared the hell out of them. <laughs> they literally, they're all gung ho. And I was like, and, and there was, you know, there was, we were taking all the risks. They didn't take any risk, but they got scared because it's like, well, you guys need to chip in too. Oh no. When it came to, you know, really investing into the vision, oh, they bailed, man. They, uh, uh, all the equipment, all the things that were in that building, I show up one day and they, it's all gone. And it's like, they wouldn't have, as cowards as they were, they just disappeared. <laughs> and, and I'm sure they saw things totally different back then too, whatever. But to this day, if you look back at what we're doing, we could have been on the beginning of something gigantic and we could have learned skills or, you know, well, I do every day uh, uh, the same thing, only in a very easy, much more easier this day and age software and everything's so much better, cameras smaller, things more affordable. Anyway, but it was called Zoom Video and Photography. <laughs> It, and uh, it didn't have a very long shelf life, but uh, I just look back at that laugh. As a, that is a great example of a visionary having an idea and uh, uh, folks around them either are on board or they're just terrified. And uh, and actually, some of those people were part of the same organization. With, uh, and I, once again, lesson learned. Um, taught me I don't want partners. That was the first thing. Two is... Uh, 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 a partnership, if you got a visionary on board, it's an asset. However, you do need the checks and balances. I can tell you that for sure. So um, that's a, this is stuff many, many years ago. Now, throughout my life, some incredible things have happened. And that's why I'm going to do a follow-up to this video. This is part one. Anyway, as a visionary, uh, there's always lessons learned. You're always... Um, there's definitely hardships, but um, visionaries, when they're really focused, also have an uh, amazing drive. I mean, to a point they'll drive people crazy. And uh, so as soon as I got out of that organization of working with kids and all that stuff, which was one of the most wonderful things in my life. And by the way, to this day, a lot of those kids contact us and say, oh, the things you did for us back then were wonderful. And that is very special. And uh, they're the ones that saw the magic of what me and Sherry did. Um, the ones outside that were trying to take over in that stuff. And sometimes it's like I have them, um, uh, friends with them, I'm friended with them. And some, they think I'm really mad at them and stuff. And at, back, in that, back in the old days, yeah, because they didn't have the guts to face me. But at the same time, I'm grateful. Um, if it wasn't for those things that happened back then, some of my greatest successes later where they never happened because now I learned the nature of people and it never changes. I don't care if it's the 1800s, um, if it's current times or in the future, people are people and they do what they do. And uh, so uh, now I know how to protect myself. Now I know how to uh, um, create something new. And uh, now I know how to do any types of partnerships or cooperative projects with other people because you never know what those other people will do. Uh, greed and money can be a big thing. Uh, back in those days, it wasn't money. It was greed and power. Um, so it's amazing. Greed and power can be just as bad as greed and money. Um, so anyway, lessons learned, right? So anyway, I will be going into many other endeavors we did through our lifetime. This was something that happened to me young. And by the way, when you're young, very young and you're a visionary and your head's about to explode with all your ideas and stuff, uh, you're going to get, you're going to be successful, but you're going to be tumbled a few times because you just didn't know how to deal with some of the things people do. And uh, people are uh, either an asset or they're your danger. And that's one of my warnings as a visionaries, be careful. 
um, because there's people like that. And back then, uh, I saw the ugly side of them and at the same time learned from that because it, it didn't hurt me financially or I didn't have buildings and leases and all kinds of business things that I did, you know, I did later in life that was in the mega thousands um, where uh, um, I really didn't encounter that kind of attitude from people till I had another really successful business back in the uh, 2000. Um, but I was totally prepared for that. And, 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 and uh, you know, fool me once, <laughs> <laughs> fool me twice. <laughs> you know how it goes. So anyway, guys, for those who are watching, they were from back in those days. Thank you. I appreciate it. Everything you taught me. And uh, for those of you who may not know back in then, it's like, all oh, the second wave was just for you. <laughs> yes, it was. And uh, uh, yet we did a lot of good things in that second wave. And uh, but uh, reality was, is I need to take all this great energy I had back then and focus it into something else, which was business and my and my career. And um, and I did. And that's where the second video will kick in. So this is the end of part one. I want to thank you very much for listening and watching. And I hope uh, for those of you uh, that see that symbol that's up on I've kept on the screen here will know exactly what it means. <laughs> and uh, and I laugh, and I still laugh today, but I am grateful. I am totally grateful. And for those of you that were part of that organization that knows what this symbol means, I hope that me and Sherry were a positive and wonderful piece of their lives that made their lives better in the future. Now, all those kids now are in their 40s, 30s, and 40s, and uh, and they've contacted us and, 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 and still discover us today. And, uh, and have told us uh, what it meant to them back then. And that means a lot to me and Sherry. And uh, so there you go. Visionaries, be careful. Visionaries, you've got a skill that a lot of people don't have. There isn't a lot of visionaries out there, I've noticed. Um, just be aware of your skill and make sure you surround yourself with people that are analytical in uh, detail oriented, they will make your vision come true. So with that in, in mind, guys, have a great day. I hope you enjoyed the video. And I am going to follow up on this and go through some other things as history went on with our lives. You know, I'm almost 60 now. So uh, a lot of things happened after that. And it all had um, roots to back then. And without those experiences, uh, some of my successes and, and there were some failures too, but at the same time, it wasn't necessarily because of that kind of stuff. Um, um, once again, it will be about being a visionary. So guys, have a great day. Be safe. Please take the time to like, subscribe, and share our videos all over the whole wide world. And we'll talk to you later. Take care, guys. Bye. Our videos are made possible by Ranger Rob Poopy Bags. Available at Amazon right now. Thank you very much for watching our video. Please take the time to like, subscribe, and share our videos all over the whole wide world. Thanks.